Examination of the S1 nerve root. There are three elements for examination of the S1 nerve root. Sensory examination, motor examination, and reflex examination. The sensory examination is easy. You examine the lateral side of the foot, as you can see here. We know the top of the foot is L5 and the medial side of the foot is L4. So the sensation of the foot it goes from S1 to L5 to L4 on the foot. The reflex is easy also. One reflex. Achilles tendon reflex. The motor is a little bit complicated because there is a lot of muscles that are innervated by the S1 nerve root. So what are the muscles innervated by the S1? Will be the preneus longus and pravus. Will be the flexor hallucis longus. Will be the gastrocnemius and the lateral hamstrings. The lateral hamstring is the biceps femoris and the gluteus maximus. So from proximal to distal, it will be the gluteus maximus, the lateral hamstring, the gastrocnemius, the flexor hallucis longus, and the perineus longus and brevis. So a patient with a herniated disc at L5-S1 affecting S1 nerve root could have immediate changes in these muscles. You may find sharp waves or fibrillations. A posterolateral herniated disc at L5-S1 clearly causes S1 nerve root irritation. But a foraminal herniated disc at L5-S1 will cause L5 radiculopathy. And if you have an L5-S1 ethmic spondylolisthesis, then that will cause L5 radiculopathy. In contrast to S1, the L5 nerve root will involve the extensor hallucis longus and the extensor digitorum longus will also involve the medial hamstring and the gluteus medius. The L5 nerve root involvement will come from posterolateral disc herniation at L4, L5 level. There is no reflex for L5, but there will be decreased sensation on the top of the foot, as you can see here. 